Do you want to be a credible teacher? Well, the secret to being credible is knowledge extension. But let's define the two terms first. What is being credible? Being credible is being believable. Being credible means that when you teach something to the student, he or she would immediately believe you because he or she knows that all that you're teaching them are based on facts. And when we say knowledge extension, it's all about sharing new pieces of information to the student that is relevant to the lesson or increasing the difficulty of your lesson. So as promised on the first part of this video, this will be all about actually demonstrating how to do knowledge extension when teaching children. So if you haven't watched uh, the first part yet, make sure you do because I'm gonna be covering the fundamentals there. And for this video, we're gonna be focusing more on just the demonstration. Let's start with the title screen. So I told you on part one that knowledge extension is all about increasing the difficulty of the lesson and sharing something new to the student, which basically we have several ways of doing that. Now, when you are doing knowledge extension, you can actually get started even as early as being on the title screen. You know, um, on this photo, uh, you get to see the name of the lesson, etc. right? So what are the things that you could, you know, extend on this, on this title screen? Well, let's talk about the rainbow. Why not ask the student, Mm, what do you see in the picture? Then they would say, uh, I don't know. Uh, when the student says, I don't know, you teach them the concept of the rainbow. Or you talk about, let's say, um, the bird or the butterfly. You can talk more about the colors. Let's say, how many colors do you see on the rainbow? How many colors do you see? Then even during the beginning of the class or in the beginning of the class, you're going to be covering like some counting exercises. Therefore, you are now able to do knowledge extension through counting. Remember, SCC, size, color, count. Now, this is the C part. You can have the student count the number of colors present in the rainbow. Next, let's talk about this slide. Uh, you do see a cat and on the top right, you see the recommended duration. Speaking of the recommended duration teachers, this is something that will give you, you know, guidance on your time management because it's important that you get to finish the entire lesson. It's important that you know when you are spending too much time on a slide or you're spending, you know, too little time on a particular slide. So use this as your guidance for your time management. Now, speaking of what's on this slide, obviously, we all know that we see a cat and the word cat. So what are the things that you could extend about this? So number one, you could ask the student to, you know, tell you what the color is. What color is it? What color is it? Then you introduce the concept of se or white. se is white in Chinese. So you, you introduce the concept of white. Then you can also talk more about, let's say, um, animals on the same category as a cat, right? Um, the same category, which basically would be dog, rabbit, or bird, the category of, you know, being a pet. You could introduce these animals as well. What I do is I'd, let's say, show my bunny ears or, or I'll show a photo of a dog using my camera effects, using Manicam, and I'd ask the student, what's this? What is it? Then the student would say, go which is Chinese for dog, then I'll use that as an opportunity to teach them the word dog. It's a dog, dog. Now, the next knowledge extension that you could do on this page would be um, teaching them a sentence pattern. The basic sentence pattern would be, it's a cat. Notice that I'm always using my fingers. It's a cat. This would be total physical response so that they would associate the sentence to something that is more, you know, uh, or easier rather to remember. It's a cat. They'd realize, okay, the sentence involves three words. It's a cat. And I do the same on the new word that I taught them, which is dog. It's a dog. As you can see, on this page alone, we were able to do knowledge extension by number one, introducing a sentence pattern, number two, asking what the color is, and number three, introducing words that are related to what you are teaching. Third example, we have apple. We, we always know that every time we teach the letter A, it's usually an apple that comes with it, right? So uh, for, let's say, this slide, you have to pay attention to how this slide looks like and, you know, use some critical thinking skills like how will I be able to expand the student's knowledge? So for this page, uh, you could 
talk more about the word apple. Yes, you were only teaching the letter A, but obviously there's a picture of an apple, so you can introduce the concept of an apple. It's an apple. Now, you can have a counting exercise for your first knowledge extension. How many apples do you see? How many apples do you see? Then there, you're going to count one, two, three, four, five. Then your next knowledge extension will be about color. What color is the apple? What color is it? Shenmianse. Then the student could say Hongse if they're Chinese, which is red. Then introduce the concept of red. The third knowledge extension would be the sentence pattern. It's an apple or these are apples. You see, those are simple sentence patterns that they can remember. And when you ask the student, what are these? Student would say, these are apples. You see, that's knowledge extension by being able to share or teach a sentence pattern. And the fourth one, of course, I know you know this, sharing the same or an object or a fruit or anything that's on the same category, just like banana, oranges, you can teach those ideas and new words as well. Just to point out, teacher, you see that there's a recommended duration on the top right. It could be the top right, bottom, or whatever, but it's usually on the teaching page. You should not exceed the recommended duration. If the recommended duration is two minutes or one minute, make sure you do not you know, spend too much time or too little time on the page. For our next examples, we're going to focus more on intermediate learners. Uh, the first three slides are more of for beginners, right? So this one would be for intermediate learners. So as you can see, this slide shows that um, we're talking about the value or the personality type of being helpful. Now, instead of just having the student say the word helpful, why not ask the student first, uh, what do you see in the picture? And mind you, teachers, of course, if you are teaching a beginner, you know, a level one or a level two student, you will never ask questions like, what do you see? Or else the student will not understand you, right? But if this is an intermediate learner, uh, like they understand simple English questions, well, you can ask the question, what do you see in the picture? What do you see? Now, as you can see, I'm doing TPR because it's easier for them to grasp ideas if I am combining actions with my words. What do you see in the picture? Then the student would say, I see a boy and a girl. Then you could also ask, who is she? Who is she? You could circle the mother and maybe you could introduce the concept of mother. Yes, you are not, you know, really teaching something related to being helpful, but you are using the material to expand the student's knowledge and maybe teach them about the concept of mother or son. And you'd be able to do that by, you know, encircling the, the photo from, from the teaching material. If I'm going to circle the boy, then I'd say that this is the son son and this is mother you see those are the easiest ways to do knowledge extension if you're just going to incorporate additional knowledge that you're sharing with the student to what you are seeing on the slide now of course you are going to be using or introducing a sentence pattern as your knowledge extension the word is helpful so you could say he is helpful or you could say i am helpful that could be a sentence pattern that you will teach on this slide now, teacher, what if your student is like too smart for the teaching material? Let's say you can finish this slide in like three seconds. They already know that you're talking about soccer or football because that, that's their favorite sport. Then again, there's a recommended duration. How would you be able to follow the recommended duration if the student already knows it? Well, this is the part when you increase the difficulty. Use your knowledge extension to increase the difficulty of whatever, you know, slide or teaching material that you have with you. And how do we do that? Ask open-ended questions. You know, um, engage the student in a conversation that would allow them to think in English. That way, you are increasing the difficulty of the lesson. For example, yes, we do see soccer or football. If, if it says soccer, you could ask the student, what's another name for soccer? or vice versa. What's another name for football? Then you introduce the concept of soccer and football. Then you could ask the student more about their hobbies. What are your hobbies? Notice teachers that my questions are not closed ended questions. I'm not asking yes um, questions answerable by yes or no anymore. I'm asking questions that would allow them to think, what are your hobbies? Or can you tell me more about your hobbies? If the student says, I like basketball, then encourage them to you know, talk more about basketball. Do you often play basketball? 
So teacher, notice that yes, it is answerable by yes and no, but you're introducing the adverb often, right? Do you often play basketball? Then the student would say yes, let's say. Then you could ask another follow-up question and increase the difficulty. Who do you play basketball with? Then the student would say, my friends. If your student says, my friends, this is an opportunity for you to teach them and encourage them to always answer in complete sentences. I often play basketball with my friends versus just saying my friends. You see, these are easy ways for us to increase the difficulty of the lesson. And we would also be able to ensure that your students get to learn a lot from you and you follow the recommended duration for this page. Now let's talk about advanced learners. Notice teacher that for advanced kids, you know, uh, the material is too wordy and it requires the student to read a lot. And there are like difficult words that they would be able or should be able to read. Now, when it comes to advanced learners, yes, you could increase the difficulty of the material or you could ask open-ended questions to the students. Let's say for this scenario, um, I'm gonna have the student read everything and I'm also gonna ask the question, what do you see? Then they're gonna say, I see a cheetah. Are cheetahs fast or are they slow? Then the student would say they're fast, blah, 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 blah. Then I'm going to ask a challenging question. Let's say, Sunny, can you give me an example of fast land animals? What fast land animals do you know other than a cheetah? Then the student could say lion, tiger, or the student could say zebra. All of these are like running animals. And, you know, the sky's the limit, teacher. When you, when you open this topic, you could talk more about wild animals. You could talk about, you know, the safari or, you know, their favorite wild animal, the movie Lion King. It just basically open, opens doors to so many more topics that you could share to the student. And once again, let's just make sure that we do not exceed the time limit. Limit. If let's say the student uh, gets to encounter difficulties for this page, they could they couldn't say the word kilometers or kilometers. They couldn't say it properly. Then guide them, right? Guide them, or you could ask them to read the passage, and you could increase the difficulty by asking the question, "What did you learn from the passage?" You see, you're now testing them on their reading comprehension, and that's how we do it for advanced learners. And it doesn't stop there, teachers. You can even do knowledge extension during achievement tests or class assessments or class exercises. Let's say for a crossword puzzle, you could ask them, uh, what color is the doll? Do you have a doll? Or let's say they were able to finish and find all the words in like 10 seconds because they're, they're, they really like puzzles and these kinds of exercises. Then talk more about toys. You, since this page focuses on toys, you could show other toys like a toy train or a toy robot and introduce the concept of train and robot. Or let's say another example that we have here is an assessment about flags and countries. You could talk about colors. You could talk more about uh, what we call the people who live, let's say, in America. We don't call them America we, or Americ. We call them Americans. What do you call people who live in China? We call them Chinese. So once again, teachers, when it comes to knowledge extension, you yourself have to do some critical thinking on how you would be able to add value to your class. Adding value means, you know, giving them a meaningful experience wherein when they leave your class, they'd be able to say to themselves, oh, I learned a lot from my teacher. And these are the things that can help you be a credible teacher. If you want to be an expert in what you do, you also have to do your job really well. And I hope that you have learned something from this video. If you do like this content, don't forget to give Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel teach it karen comment if you have like questions or video requests and hit the bell icon to get notified for new video uploads thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your never-ending support for my channel i love you guys and don't forget to be a blessing to the people around you see you next time teachers mm -hmm.